Okay, lesson 8.2, we're gonna talk about graphing basic rational functions. So in the last lesson, we talked about uh, graphing, or not graphing, but talking about inverse variation uh, functions. And remember, inverse variation functions were in the form y equals one over x. These are a special type of rational function. And when we talk about a rational function, we're talking about a polynomial divided by another polynomial. But when you graph this uh, basic inverse variation uh, function, y equals one over x, see how the a, the constant of variation is one? You get this graph that looks like this. It's a called a hyperbola. And basically what happens is these two branches of the uh, graph approach the y-axis and approach the x-axis. They get closer and closer. They don't touch, they don't cross. Um, these are what are called asymptotes. And again, it just gets closer but doesn't touch or cross. But what you can do with this equation here is you can write it in a more general way uh, as I've written it here, y equals a over x minus h plus k. Now just to um, tell you what each of these stand for, the h basically picks up the graph and shifts it in the horizontal direction, left and right. But it has the opposite effect. So if this was x minus one, it would actually go to the right one. If it was x plus one, it would actually go to the left one. And the k is the vertical shift. So if it's positive two, it would actually go up two. If it's negative two, it would go down two. And the a is a stretch. So if it's greater than one, it would be like stretching the graph. If it's between zero and one, it would compress the graph. And if it's negative, it would reflect that graph over the x-axis. So this branch would come down here and this branch would go up here. Okay, so it's just reflecting it. So let's talk about an example with this first and then I'll show you this other type that we're gonna work with. So. Let's look at letter A. So these are just some introductory examples. I'll have some for you to practice on your own, but y equals two over x minus one plus three. Okay, so what we can do here is a couple different things, but what we can realize is that you know the denominator cannot equal zero because dividing by zero is undefined. If we set this denominator equal to zero, you can see we're gonna get x equals one. Okay, or you can just take, uh, think about this as a horizontal shift to the right one, not negative one, but the opposite to the right one. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna have our vertical asymptote right here at x equals one. The three is what's gonna shift up the graph three units. So this one's gonna have a horizontal asymptote of y equals three. Now the two, we can see that it's greater than one, so this is gonna be like a vertical stretch. It means that these are gonna kinda of go up faster, okay? It's being stretched or multiplied um, by two. But what you can do, a simple way to do this is to make a little table, okay, like an XY table. And what you wanna do is you wanna pick values that are on either side of this vertical asymptote. And the reason is, is because, you know, when you get closer to this asymptote, the graph's either gonna go up towards positive infinity or down towards negative infinity. So I like to pick a couple that are fairly close to that vertical asymptote, like for example, negative one, uh, zero would be a good one, two and three. So let's go ahead and put those in. If I put negative one in, I get negative two, Two divided by negative two is negative one, plus three is two. If I put zero in, I get negative one. That's gonna give you negative two plus three, which is one. If I put two in, two minus one is one, two over one is two, plus three is five. And if I put three in, three minus one is two, two divided by two is one, plus three is four. Okay, so all I'm doing is just substituting some values on either side of this vertical asymptote. If we plot these points, we get negative one, two, uh, let's, oops, I'm sorry, negative one, two, right here, zero, one, right there, and then two, five, that's gonna be four, five, right here, and three, one, two, three, four, which is right there. So you can see the graph is looking something like that, and like that. Now, if you want to uh, state the domain in the range, meaning, you know, what can the x values be, and what can the y values be, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, the domain is gonna be all real numbers, but, x cannot equal one, because you can see that's, there's a gap in the graph there, that's what your asymptote is. And the range, meaning what can the y values be, those would be all real numbers, because this goes down to negative infinity, up to positive infinity, but you can see there's a gap right here at y equals three, so we're gonna say y cannot equal three. Okay, so Want to learn algebra two? Check out my Learn Algebra two video course for sale, where we go through 85 video lessons that take you step by step by step through algebra two. We go through the important formulas, concepts as well as numerous examples to help you master algebra two. Click the interactive card or the link in the description below to go over and check out some of the free lessons. Otherwise, let's get back into this current lesson. Three. Okay, so that's how you do the ones that are in this form, y equals a over x minus h plus k, where a is a constant. 
Let's look at number uh, letter B now and letter C, but now notice that these are in a slightly different form. They're in the form y equals ax plus b over cx plus d. Notice we have a variable x in the numerator and the denominator. Also notice that they're just to the first power. This is just x to the first, x to the first. It's not like it's x squared or x cubed or anything like that. These are just a linear, okay, meaning to the first degree. And so what we do with these ones, okay, it's very similar to this in the sense that you can't divide by zero. So that's going to give you your vertical asymptote. Okay, so let's do that part here. So for letter B, you can see here x minus 2 cannot equal zero because we can't divide by zero. That means that x cannot equal 2, which means we're going to have a vertical asymptote right here at x equals 2. The next thing we want to look at, okay, are these two coefficients, the letters, uh, not the letters, but the numbers that come in front of or to the left of the variable. So you can see that's going to be A and C. So y equals A over C is going to be your horizontal asymptote. So here you can see this is like 2 over 1, so y equals 2 is our horizontal asymptote. Now you might be saying, Mario, you know, why is that? Well, you'll talk a little bit more about this when you get to pre-calculus and in calculus, but it's called a limit. And it just means that, you know, as x gets larger and larger, what happens to this fraction? Well, you can see when x gets larger, like a million, for example, the 1 is really not that influential. So this would be like about 2 million. Same thing here, when you subtract 2 from a million, 1 times a million is a million. This is really not that influential. So you can see it's getting closer to 2 million over 1 million, which reduces to 2. So you can see that's why as you go way out here to the right, it's going to get closer to the line y equals 2. But for now, just uh, pay attention to the ratio of the coefficients in front of the x's here, and that'll give you your horizontal asymptote. Vertical asymptote, you set the denominator equal to 0. So now we have a nice framework for our graph. Some of these uh, asymptotes kind of give us like a boundary or a uh, a line that the graph is approaching. But at this point, I would do similar to what I did here, make a table, and I would just pick some values that are on either side of this vertical asymptote. So for example, 0, 1, uh, 3, and 4 again. So those are some good values. So if we put in um, 0, that's going to be 1 over negative 2, which is negative 1 half. If we put 1 in, we get 2 plus 1 is 3 over uh, negative 1, which is negative 3. If we put 3 in, we get 7 over 1, which is 7. If we put 4 in, we get 9 over 2. Uh, which is 4.5. Okay, so if we plot those points now, we get 0, negative 1 half, right about there, uh, 1, negative 3, which is down here, uh, let's see, 3, 7, which is going to be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You'll learn more advanced techniques for graphing these when you get to pre-calculus. Okay, so the video just cut out, but I just uh, graphed the rest of this uh, rational function here for us. So you can see it's getting closer and closer to the uh, horizontal asymptote, the vertical asymptote. The domain is going to be all real numbers except for x equals 2, and the range is going to be all real numbers except for y equals 2, because that's where the horizontal asymptote is. So the last introductory example is a letter C here, and you can see we've got y equals 1x minus 3 over 2x plus 5. Uh, again, to find the vertical asymptote, you just set the denominator equal to 0, so that comes out to negative 2.5, so you can see over here I've drawn in the vertical asymptote at negative 5 halves or negative 2.5. The ratio of the coefficients is going to be 1 over 2, y equals a half, so that's our horizontal asymptote right there. And then what I did is I picked some points to the left and to the right of this vertical asymptote. So I picked negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. I plotted those points and drew the graph. So just kind of pay attention to the two different types. We've got one where you just have a constant in the numerator. And then the other one we have where there's a uh, variable x in the numerator and the denominator. So two different types of uh, rational functions that we're going to be practicing here. So let me erase the whiteboard, and uh, you can practice. Uh, I've got five examples for you. Okay, so here's your opportunity to practice. What I'd like for you to do is um, graph the function, state the domain, the range, and the asymptotes. So let's start with number one. How would you do this one? y equals negative 12 divided by x. So these, this is a rational function, right? Ratio means like a fraction. But if you notice, it, it kind of looks like this first one here. But what do you notice about the h and the k? They're not there, right? That means they're both 0. So what that means is that we're not shifting it left or right. We're not shifting it up or down. So our asymptotes are going to be right on the y-axis and they're right on the x-axis. So the y-axis is the line x equals 0. The x-axis is the line y equals 0. So here what I would do is I'd make a little table pick some points. So I'm just going to pick maybe like negative 4, negative 3, positive 3, positive 4. So negative 4 would give us a positive 3. Negative 3 would give us a positive 4. 
negative four, negative three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plot those points, one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, so right about there, uh, negative three, four, right about there. So you can see this graph's looking something like that. And then three, negative four, see one, two, three, negative four, right about there, and then four, negative three, right about there. So this branch looks something like that. So the domain would be all real numbers, except for zero, x cannot be zero. The range would be all real numbers, except for y cannot equal zero. And then again, the asymptotes are x equals zero, y equals zero. So see if you can do number two. Go ahead and pause the video for this one. y equals three over x plus four minus one. How would you graph that? Well, remember the plus four is actually gonna have the opposite effect. It's gonna shift it left four. And again, that's because we can't divide by zero. So we have a vertical asymptote right here at x equals negative four. And uh, let's see, so now the uh, horizontal asymptote, this is shifting up, uh, down one, minus one means going down one, so our horizontal asymptote is gonna be right here at y equals negative one. Now all we have to do is uh, plot some points, and I like to pick some points on either side of the vertical asymptote, so why don't we just pick some values, say for example, like negative six, negative five, negative three, negative two. So I put negative six in, that's gonna give us negative two, that's gonna give us three over negative two, which is negative 1.5, minus one is negative 2.5, Negative five gives us negative one, that's negative three minus one is negative four. If we put negative three in, that's gonna give us one. Three, minus, three over one is three, minus one is two. Negative two plus four is two. Three over two is 1.5, minus one is uh, 1.5 or a half, or 0.5, which is a half. So we have uh, negative six down 2.5, which is right about there. Uh, negative five, negative four, which is right about there. Okay, I'm just estimating here. And then negative three, two, that's gonna be right up here. And negative two, a half is gonna be right about there. So you can see this graph is like, kind of going down like that. But what you can see is happening here is, uh, you know, the graph is approaching the two asymptotes. So the domain is gonna be all real numbers except for negative four. The range is gonna be all real numbers except for y cannot equal negative one. Okay, try number three now. Y equals five over x minus two. Go ahead and pause the video. How would you do that one? Well, if you look at this, you notice how there's not a k value here. So that means it's not being shifted up or down. So our horizontal asymptote is gonna be right on the x-axis, which is the line y equals zero. But you can't divide by zero. You can see that the vertical asymptote is gonna be at x equals two. So we have x equals two and y equals zero for our asymptotes. All we have to do now is make a table, plot some points. Again, I like to pick some points on either side of the vertical asymptote. So if I put zero in, I get negative 2.5. If I put one in, I get negative five. If I put three in, I get five. And if I put four in, I get 2.5. So let's see what does that come out to. Negative 2.5, uh, one is negative five, which is right down here. Uh, three, five, which is gonna be up here. And four, 2.5, which is right there. So you can see the graph is like going down like that. And it's going like that. Domain is all real numbers except for two. Range is all real numbers except for y cannot equal zero. Okay, for number four and number five, notice how there's a variable in the numerator and the denominator. So we're gonna be working with this form right here, y equals ax plus b over cx plus d. So how would you graph number four? Well, if I was gonna do this one, I would set the denominator to zero. That means that x cannot equal negative two. I look at the ratio of the coefficients. That's one over one, which equals one. So y equals one is our horizontal asymptote. I'd pick some values, uh, easy values, so something that a little bit uh, to the left and right of the vertical asymptote. So I might pick uh, negative four, negative three, negative one, and zero. So let's see, if we put zero in, that comes out to one half. If we put negative one in, that comes out to zero. If we put negative three in, that's gonna be negative two over negative one, which is positive two. If we put negative four in, we get uh, negative three over negative two, which is positive three halves. So if we plot these, let's see, negative four, let's see, one, two, three, four, uh, three halves, which is like 1.5, uh, negative three, two, which is right about there, okay? So you can see this graph's going up like that. And then negative one, zero is gonna be right here, and zero, a half is gonna be right here. So this graph is going like that. Okay, last example, see if you can do this one. Number five, y equals two x minus three over x minus one, how would you do that one? Well, we can't divide by zero, so x equals one's our vertical asymptote. 
the ratio of the coefficients is 2 over 1, which is y equals 2. Okay, And if we pick some values on either side of the vertical asymptote 1, like maybe negative 1, 0, 2, and 3, that's going to give us negative 5 over negative 2, which is 2.5. 0 is going to give us uh, negative 3 over negative 1, which is 3. 2 is going to give us 1 over 1, which is 1. And 6 minus 3 is 3 over 2, which is 1.5. So if we graph those, uh, that's going to be here. Oops, negative 1, 2.5 is going to be right here. 0, 3 is going to be right here. So you can see this graph is looking like that. And then 2, 1 is going to be right here. And 3, 1.5 is going to be right about there. So this graph is looking something like that. So domain is going to be all real numbers except for x equals 1. Remember, because you can't divide by 0. The range is going to be all real numbers except for y equals 2. So great job. Review this video if you need to. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson.